There's a fly in the car. I wonder if I can get it out. Get out, fly, get out. Ow. Ow. Oh, well. Ciao, I'm Mario, a Swiss car guy on YouTube. And today I'm standing next to this BMW. Recently, I asked the question, what would be the perfect sports car for Switzerland? Because I reckoned my Nissan GTR is too fast and also too heavy and too large for the narrow Swiss mountain roads. I went to drive a Mazda MX-5 and I didn't really like it because it was lacking on power. So imagine how happy I was when a viewer of this channel, Sam, offered me to drive this 2006 BMW Z4 M Coupe. And on paper, this seems to be the perfect sports car because it's relatively small. It has a powerful engine. It has 343 horsepower from a 3.2 liter straight six. The same engine as the E46 BMW M3. And it is a manual. I only see two problems with it. Well, first off, and the second problem is, well, it's not the prettiest thing in the world. I'm so sad. I don't want to be a BMW. Yes, this car was born in the height of the Chris Bengal era at BMW, which is why it still doesn't look that great. Then again, I think this is a very nice example. The color is very nice. It is in great shape for a 15-year-old car. The car is in pretty nice shape. I mean, considering it's 15 years old and has 137,000 kilometers, it's in good shape. The only little problem it has is it has a little bit of bubbling under the third brake light. And the owner tells me it's been very reliable. But then again, I think BMW owners, they must be a bit more tolerant and a bit masochistic, if you ask me, because he also told me that, well, he replaced the rod bearings and on a car like this, it's considered regular maintenance. So, okay, but enough talking in front of the car. Let's go into the car and start driving it. But first, let's check whether the Z4M really is in such a good condition. And for that, we use Carly, this video's sponsor. Carly accesses your car's data through the OBD port and translates this information into powerful insights about your car's health, maintenance and customization possibilities. Might have to turn the ignition on. Let's select the proper car. Add a new car, which I think is a used car check. Let's go. Start the used car check. I can see the values from the currently connected car. Very nice. Okay. I'm probably not going to show you the VIN. I don't think the owner wants that. But let's do the mileage. So Carly says that the vehicle is higher mileage, which is based on two data sets. So not really anything to worry about. And it also says, <laughs> there is no sign of tampering. So at least the mileage is accurate, which is very good. Now, let's see this. Further data, ooh, line, nice. You have build date, 27th of August. Cool. Let's go back. What else can we show? The VINs, I might blur them out. Oh, that's cool. It matches the VINs from different components to see if the car has been pieced together. Let's check the car's health. Oh, but it found two acceptable issues. <laughs> nice to see that there are acceptable issues. And it's with auxiliary heating and central info display. Which will say, generic communication issue in the ECU. Okay. And then the central info display, which is an IBUS transmit error. Okay, but no serious issues found with the car, so it's all right. And you see, these are basically just intermittent communication errors, which is something you usually get when a module doesn't properly respond. Not a big deal. And we have everything else is pretty much good. Let's clear the issues we have, just to be on the safe side. 
Okay, error codes are deleted and it asks you if you want to be reminded to check again in a few days to see if the codes have come back. That's very smart. Cool. So thanks to Carly, we know that the car is actually as sound as it looks. And don't forget, that if you want to get your own Carly, there's a link in the description down below. And also the discount code Swiss Car Guy is valid until I think November 1st which will give you 15% off your first Carly purchase. So again, thanks to Carly for sponsoring this video. And if you want to get your own Carly, use my code. The first things I notice when driving this car is that the power delivery, especially the throttle response, is quite brutal. I mean, when you hit the throttle, the whole car jolts. Then again, after that, the acceleration is not that awesome because this is a straight six. It has no turbos. It's a naturally aspirated engine. Therefore, it needs to be revved. And I'm not saying this car is underpowered because with 343 horsepower, it definitely isn't. But it doesn't feel like torquey like a modern twin turbo car, like, for example, the Toyota Supra I've also driven. But in a way, it's even better for that because this is a car you can rev out to a certain extent without really breaking the speed limit. Because if you rev it out completely in second gear, you will just do about 100 kilometers per hour. So yeah, okay. Here it's an 80 zone, so you might not rev it out entirely second gear, but it still allows you to, you know, to hear the engine, to have a bit of fun. And the engine, you know, being the smooth straight six that it is, it sounds pretty good. Then again, this car is quite civilized. When driving around slowly, the engine, it never stutters. It's, it's very smooth. It's actually very forgiving because let's not forget, this is a manual car and I'm not that used to driving manual cars. I mean, my last manual car was my Porsche 996 Turbo that I sold like, four years ago and I haven't driven a lot of manuals since and this one surprisingly is so forgiving that I haven't stalled it once and I'm the kind of guy I drive a manual like a grandma so I will treat the clutch very gingerly because I know clutch replacements are expensive so I try to be as nice as possible to them which in my Porsche used to me very frequently stalling the car and in this car, since I've driven it, I haven't stalled it once because the car is very benevolent when you drive it slowly, when you just have to use the clutch, the engine doesn't really want to die on you. And in general, the manual transmission, which probably is the piece de resistance of the car, it's good. It, it's obviously a good manual transmission. I mean, this is a BMW. If BMW doesn't know how to do good transmissions, I don't know who does. I'm still not convinced. Personally, I'm still a fan of automatics just because it seems to me that I'm used to automatics. It seems so arcane to have to shift these gears to use the clutch pedal. And also this car um, being the, you know, sort of serious sports car that it is and having uh, quite a few years under its buckle. When you shift, you hear some noises from the differential, from the back, from the drivetrain, which makes the car feel even more like mechanical and like you're operating arcane machinery. And I understand to most of you guys, having a nice manual on a road like this is like heaven. But me personally, I'd rather be having a nice automatic because I always feel the temptation of pulling the pedal in order to shift to the next gear. Instead, I have to reach down here. That said, the transmission is, you know, very short throw. Um, I, I suppose it's good, but I find it to be not super smooth. So it's a bit, it can be a bit notchy. So you, you must manhandle it a bit. I don't know if it's because like it's, it's a bit worn and the car is old or if it's always been like this. I'm not saying it's bad, but it's, it's, it's not smooth. Also, the car is quite short geared and this is also because the car being naturally aspirated is not extremely torquey. It's perfectly fine for driving around town, but the car, for the car to accelerate swiftly when you hit the pedal, it needs revs. Therefore, this car is geared quite short.
One thing I have to say is really nice about this car, this is a proper sports car. So you sit quite low to the ground, you have this long hood, you have the short re-up end. Um, it feels definitely like you're in a sports car. And also this car, despite being 15 years old, it still feels actually quite stiff and together. Because usually on a car of this age, you, you'd hear some rattles and, and stuff and maybe even some skull shake. In this case, no. Nope. The car still feels very very solid and i think a reason for that is because this is one of the rare coupes that is based on the convertible and usually convertible they get strengthened in order to be more stiff in this case they just taken a convertible and they added a roof which means this car has a very high torsional rigidity and you can feel it even going over bumps there aren't many many rattles there aren't many creaks for an old car this is actually amazing but being based on a convertible also means that this is one of the rare coupes that is actually more heavy than the equivalent convertible. Because when they added the roof, they didn't take out all the strengthening parts for the convertible. So they just added the roof, which makes the car heavier. And speaking about heavy, this car weighs about one and a half tons, a bit less. The official document says 1495 kilogram. And with 343 horsepower it should go quite well and indeed it does it does 0 to 100 in about five seconds i'm so not used to driving naturally aspirated engines anymore because this car even though it has 343 horsepower when you put your foot down at first it's mainly the noise that increases yes the car does speed up but it's not like these modern twin turbo cars where you got this wall of torque that propels you ahead. No, 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 this car basically, it's very linear, which I reckon is nice, but then again, it never feels as dramatic uh, in acceleration. Sure, you get a lot of sound, which in its own way is actually quite nice because you can get a lot of sound out of the car without going silly speeds. Let's get down into third. Honestly, I reckon this car has exactly the right amount of power. It's enough to have fun, it's enough to get you in trouble most likely, but it's not that much that every time you hit the accelerator you're doing 150 km per hour. So this basically is the perfect kind of car. I will now turn off the traction control because I found driving previously that the traction control limits a bit too much on acceleration. So it's going off. The owner tells me he just replaced the brakes and put endless performance brake pads on the car. And he said that, you know, after he changed the brake pads, the car, it doesn't feel as responsive on the braking. And I thought, well, sure. But honestly, having driven the car a bit, it doesn't brake as positively as I would expect it from a car like this. I mean, it's not it's not a very light car but it's also not a very heavy car but still the brakes they feel a bit vague when you when you hit them in a corner and maybe this will improve as the brakes wear in but right now i think the brakes when you drive the car hard are letting the car down a bit the owner of this car he says the car's been very reliable and i reckon it must be because he's currently maintaining it on no income because you see, he founded a startup that's called Garage Advisor. And by the name, you can guess that it's pretty much the same as TripAdvisor, but for garages and workshops. So if you need to find a workshop, a garage to repair, to work on your car, you can hop onto garageadvisor.ch and you will find the garage you need. It, it has actually the most comprehensive listings of all the garages in all of Switzerland and it offers filters so that you can search for a particular garage in your vicinity. You can look for, you know, particular brands or garages that are specialized in brands. 
Therefore, if you're looking for a workshop for a garage to service your car, hop on to garageadvisor.ch and uh, have a look. Anyway, he is maintaining this car on no income, which I think is amazing and it must speak for the car because if this was ruinously expensive to maintain, I don't think he could do it. Oh, and the reason why he has no income is because they are still in a pre-revenue phase. They just only founded the company and uh, therefore, yeah, he's not getting a salary yet. Another thing is, he bought this car in 2016 for 22,000 Swiss francs. And nowadays, with all the craziness going on in the car market, I reckon that this car with its 137,000 Swiss francs, since it is in very good condition, could easily be a 30,000 franc car. So the car has appreciated quite substantially. And honestly, I can see why, because these Z4M coupes, they are rare, because not too many people bought them in the first place. Most people preferred the convertible. And to be honest, I don't know, maybe I would prefer the convertible too. Because this car still, to somebody who is a bit taller like me, I'm 1 meter 84, it's, uh, I know, it's not tight because there is enough space. But there's a black headliner, the, the windshield is cut quite low, it can feel claustrophobic. It's not as bad as a modern day Supra, but it's still, it could be better. This car also has a sport button, which I'm pressing right now. But I find it to be absolutely useless because once you've activated the sports button, the gas becomes basically on off. So every time you hit the pedal, it does this. It's completely useless. It's just, how do you drive a car like this? Because it's, it becomes basically impossible to feather in the gas because it's just, applying too much gas. Therefore, if you want to drive this car um, properly, you have to disable the sport button, which is completely wrong. Then again, this car is quite nice to drive. It's easy to handle. I think it's predictable in its behavior. And again, it's a small sports car. I like it. I haven't said anything about the steering of this car because usually I'm not somebody who notices when a car has a particularly good or particularly bad steering because you see, most of the time I drive a Lexus LS600H and that car has no feel at all in the steering. So every other car compared to that is basically perfect. And even this car, the steering is very nice. It lets you know what the wheels are doing. It's light but not too light, and you get a big, girthy steering wheel, if you like that. So, is the BMW Z4M the perfect sports car? Well, I think that, for Switzerland at least, it probably is. Because it's not too large, it has enough horsepower, it handles well, it has a great sounding engine that's very smooth. I think this is a very good sports car. Is it the perfect sports car for me? No. No, 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 no. And it's besides the badge snobbery that I'm not a big fan of BMWs. I think this car is one of the better BMWs. Even the interior, I kind of like it. It has this like carbon structured leather or whatever it is. It's very nice and it feels okay. The quality is all right. It has worn pretty well, but to me, I'm Maybe I'm not the, the small sports car guy. Having driven a GTR for so long, I'm kind of spoiled for, for cars. I expect performance, I expect handling. This car has it, it doesn't have the performance of a GTR. It has good handling, not the handling of a GTR, but then again, this is a lighter car, this is a much more nimble car. And this is even a quite a practical car because with a hatchback at the rear, you can fit quite a lot of stuff in the car. And well, it doesn't have back seats, but still, you can fit some luggage, you can bring around some stuff, which is good. In a sports car, it's actually great. But to me, I think I've come to the realization that a manual car just doesn't do it for me. I can see why guys like manual cars, they like the, whoa, 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 whoa. They like the engagement, but personally, 
To me, it seems like unnecessary amounts of work just in order to shift the gear. And yes, you can say it's pleasurable to get the right gear and the right time, but that was the wrong gear. If the BMW Z4M Coupe is the perfect sports car, then why don't I want one? There is this Grace Jones song from the 80s. I'm not perfect, but I'm perfect, perfect, perfect. For you. And with this car it's quite the opposite. You see, I am perfect, but the Z4M is not perfect, perfect, perfect for me. Or was it the other way around? The Z4M is the perfect sports car, but it's not perfect, perfect, perfect for me. Maybe what I really want is not a sports car, but something different. What is your opinion? Do you think the BMW Z4M is the perfect sports car? please comment down below. Hey, and if you like this video, leave a like. Consider subscribing to my channel for more videos in the future. Hey, and if you have a cool car that you think I should drive, let me know. Comment down below or write to me at mario at swisscarguy.com. Anyway, that's it for this video. I'm gonna drive some more in the Z4M Coupe. And so long, have a nice day. Bye. I'm starting to get car sick from my own driving. I hate it. Perfect, perfect.